been searching for hours. I've not seen one. I'm not going back home empty-handed. Mr. McNabb. There you are, sir. See? Mostly females. A few males, not much ivory, I'm afraid. Who cares? It's only to shoot. I got you covered. But just take it nice and easy. Mr. Bitter, no animal is to be dropped unless I say so. This is my safari, Mr. Quarterman. I promised you one full grown male, and that is what you will get, sir. Alan. Sir, I'm sorry, sir. I did not travel thousands of miles for one measly elephant. I'll take care of it, sir. Yeah. What are you doing? I need this job. He's used to getting what he wants. It's not my problem. We don't make him happy. He just hires another guide. Man is not shooting females and calves when he's with me. With more and more of his kind coming out here, we could be rich. You could be rich. I could be rich. You could take proper care of your son. Don't you dare. We've got a contract, McNabb. I'll kill as many of the filthy beasts as I like. You get your kill, sir. Not with me, you won't. You go ahead and shoot. for the first day, don't you think? No, not bad. Mr. Bitter, a wounded elephant is the most dangerous animal in the bush. This mother, she's big, powerful, and she is very smart. She knows exactly who it is who shot her. Really? Really. That's true? But she's probably being mauled by a pack of lion or hyena by now. Good. Good. Splendid. Oh, rubbish.
Sorry, girl. unlock the mystery of King Solomon's mines is almost over. I must also report with a certain amount of irony that while I am as close to the mines as I have ever been, there are outside forces that could prevent me from reaching my goal. Well, momentarily, I'm sure. It has come to my attention that my wealthy benefactors and the local Kokwani tribes are in some sort of competition to plunder the riches of Africa. It has become depressingly apparent that you are the only one I can still trust. I am sending you this map for safekeeping. It is of tremendous value and must be guarded with great care. It is my hope that I can protect you from the dangers that I have encountered. But in the event that you shall need protection, I urge you to look up Alan Quatermain. He is a man of great honor. Please keep this map from harm's way, and perhaps we can keep the mind safe from those who would tarnish its legend forever. Your loving father. Bintu, take this, run as fast as you can and stop for no one. Africa shines on you. You should not blame this land for your bad luck. Kiva, I'm not blaming Africa for anything, and it has nothing to do with bad luck. What with a partner stabbing me in the back and my wife? I have a son in England who I believe needs a father, and it's about time I become one. You do not belong in England. You belong here with us. Yeah. Africa won't be the same without you. Africa is going to be the same whether I'm here or not. Why did you bring me here? You have a map that leads to a key. I want that key. But you haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Mulaleni! 
No, no, no. Wait. Yes, I... I... I found... I found a map, and it, it may have mentioned something about a key, but it's long gone. I sent it across the great ocean to my daughter in England. That is unfortunate for you. You will bring it back. <laughs> That's impossible. No, Midland. Nothing is impossible. You write a letter to your daughter in England to tell her to bring that map back to us. Russia hired me to find that map, and he had a great army behind him. I wasn't afraid of him, and I'm not afraid to die. <laughs> I can bring you pain far worse than death. <laughs> Little Harry anymore. I guess I have to call you Big Harry, huh? Hello, Charles. Who's here? Hello, Margaret. It's it's been a long time, Alan. Yes, it has. You're not going to take him back to Africa. No, no, I'm I'm back. I, I'm in London. No, Alan. Harry's happy here. We're seeking custody. Would you excuse us? I... I love you. I love you too. Go. I'll see you soon. Alan, they're filthy rich, and they're determined to keep him. You see, it may well be seen in a court of law that you abandoned your son. I did not abandon my son. When his mother died, I sent him to London to be with his grandparents because I felt it was the best thing for him at the time. You sent him thousands of miles away from you. For his own good. Yet you chose to remain there. Austin, I had to make a living. It's a very exciting life you lead, Alan. Big game hunting, going on safari, seeing the savage land firsthand. No one really blames you for choosing this above your family. I did not choose Africa over my family. To be perfectly honest, Alan, in my opinion, Harry is far better off with his grandparents. He'll have plenty of money, he'll go to fine schools. Well, I am not interested in your opinion, Austin. I am his father, he is my blood. You need to tell me whether I have a case or not. Well. You'll have to prove to the courts that you're a suitable and responsible parent. What you need is money, Alan, plenty of it, because they're going to fight you tooth and nail. Short of that, I don't see any way that you're going to get your son back. I'm sorry. Strange lad. It's a strange looking dog. It's a warthog. It's a warthog. <laughs> Bartender, another one, please. Troubles? 
Only if you consider being told you're an unfit father trouble. Yeah. Good luck, Huff. Thank you. We're obviously in the wrong place. Come, Elizabeth. I don't want you mixing with this sort. Captain, don't be silly. If he's here, I'm going to find him. Can I help you, madam? Yes. We're looking for a gentleman by the name of Mr. Alan Quatermain. Yeah. I'm Alan Quatermain. No, I'm Alan Quatermain. Now, see here, my good man, this is a lady you're speaking to. Oh, the American. I think you're looking for the soap at the end of the barn. Are you Mr. Alan Quartermain? My card. This is Captain Good. We're interested in going to Africa. Quite right. Now, if you could manage to pull yourself from your libation for a moment. I am sorry. I'm not in the safari business anymore. Why don't you and Count Dracula shove off? You'll curb your tongue, sir, or you'll deal with me. All right, Captain. There's a great deal of money in it for you. To do what? To help me find my father. He's been kidnapped in Africa. Africa is no place for a lady. I'm not afraid of anything, Mr. Quartermain. Especially when it comes to saving my father's life. loathsome man. What on earth was my father thinking to entrust his well-being to an uncouth drunk with absolutely no manners? And too much common sense. What? Well, it makes a point, Elizabeth, about you in Africa. Oh. Is it absolutely necessary that you should go? Please don't start again. You know I've made my mind up. If Quartermain will take us, well, then we'll find somebody who will. It can't be that difficult. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, so. <laughs> so what brings you back to dry land, Captain? Well, um, well, this is my dearest niece, Elizabeth Maitland, Freighter Bushel. Mom. Child. Freighter and Bushel were with me on HMS Hidalgo. Or was it the King Card? <laughs> it seems you have a great deal of things to catch up with, so I'll see myself back to the hotel. Okay. Very well, then. Uh, but make sure you stick to the main streets. I shall. Nice to meet you. So, don't worry, you're up to. There's more ways of getting back into Yes. your father. It belongs to us. You all right? I did not realize that your father is Samuel Maitland, head of archaeology at Oxford. That's right. Tell me what happened to him. I've told you. He's been kidnapped. He sent me a letter. Did they say where they might be holding him? In some place in southern Africa. And I'm prepared to offer you a great deal of money to take me there. Africa is an incredibly dangerous place, quite far removed from the luxuries of home. Elizabeth! Thank God you're back. 
Is everything all right? Yeah, something's happened. Come quickly. Look at this place. Yes, I know. There's no robbery. The man in the alley. He was not after your purse. He was looking for something else. You've been attacked. I'm the fine, Captain. I think there's something you're not telling me, Miss Maitland. Before he was kidnapped, my father sent me something. What? I'm sure you've heard of King Solomon's Mines. King Solomon's Mines do not exist. They are a myth. This map feeds to the untold wealth of the ancient Israelites. My father spent the best part of 30 years looking for it. He told me to guard it with my life. May I see it? If I don't take it to Africa, whoever kidnapped him will kill him. I don't think so. What? They sell these maps by the wagon full to tourists in Cape Town. Well, you must be mistaken, because my father's life depends on me getting that map to an African tribesman in some place called Satantra's Crawl. I'm sorry. The mines are a joke, and this map... What is it, Quartermain? All right, I, I can concede that Professor Maitland made some unique discovery, but I know that the mines do not exist. I don't care about the mines. I care about my father. Now, will you help me save him? Do they always live like this? No, yeah, thank you, madam, no. Quartermain! I knew you wouldn't be able to stay away from Africa long. It's good to have you back. Good to be back. Uh, only, only for a short time, though. Good to be. I'll believe that when I see it. I <laughs> believe it. Uh -huh. Stay out of trouble. I will try. You should run for governor. Oh, too dangerous. <laughs> Mamma, <laughs> I give a hupusile. As you first one. I was a baba, and I'm done. You. Yebong Yazi. Kodwa, Uyun Kinga. Number? What are they saying? 
Uh, weather's been terrible. Miss Elizabeth Maitland. Captain Good, Ms. Kiba, and Ben Vogel. Uh. B for short. So, I have a job for you. But you look a little busy. Ah, <laughs> We're ready to set See you are not gonna believe this, but we are looking for the mines again. It is here. Did you see the map? Yet. But she is traveling with others. The old one. And caught her me. Recognize him? Oh, yes. So tell me about this Kotorman. He arrived in this country 12 years ago. Showed up at my office fresh off a ship with nothing but a rifle. I took him on. For a while, we did well. And then? He brought his wife out to Africa, had a child. And then he got careless. Took his wife on safari. She got mauled by a lioness protecting its cubs. Of course, he went crazy. Started thinking he'd been punished for all the killing he'd done. And then he turned on me. What if we have to kill him? Let's just say I won't have him turn on me again. You understand that the map that they carry is the property of the Tsar? I understand you need a guide who knows Africa better than your two friends here from Siberia. You will be our guide for 10% of whatever we find. 25 and don't say 22 and a half. Fine. Deal. Ladies and gentlemen, the Blom Hotel. So this is it. <laughs> Seems pleasant enough. Now, Miss Maitland, I trust that you have suitable clothing for safari. I believe I have suitable clothing for safari, Mr. Quartermain. Up to you. What is this? Ostrich neck, sir. Ostrich neck. You don't like it, boss? Well. Bon appetit. Yes. What time do we leave tomorrow? Crack of dawn. Kadermin. You lily livered pansy. I thought I told you not to show your ugly face around these parts again. Quartermain, there's a very large, hairy gentleman requesting your attention. Yes, Miss Maitland, I can smell him. Why don't you just stand up and fight like a man? Or in your case, like a woman? Would you excuse me? Forgive me. Good. That's very good. Try an African tree for a chance. Do something to help him. You can dance all you like, Cockerbin, but you're not going to. You Scottish. Captain, stop them. Oh. 
Are we done yet, Henry? I don't know about you, but I need a drink. Thank you, Captain. Oh, uh... So, this Professor Maitland is being held by a native tribe. Yes, um, he called them the Kwakwani. Have you ever heard of them? No, can't say that I have. What would they want with a professor type anyway? Well, that's where it gets very interesting. Professor I don't Maitland think we need to go into that, do you, Mr. Quatermain? Ms. Maitland, although Sir Henry may not look like much, he is honorable and I would trust this man with my life. So do you think it's genuine? Henry... This journey isn't about locating the mines and finding riches. It's about saving my father's life. Well, I believe in cold hard cash, Missy. And I believe that I'm paying you handsomely to help me trade this map from my father. But what you do after that is up to you. Good night, gentlemen. <laughs> to you, Cotterme. What are you talking about? Taking a woman out there? <laughs> I heard everything. Do you have the money? They are leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Where to? Sitanda's crown. They are to meet a native and give him a map. King Solomon's treasures. King Solomon's mines are a part of ancient history. Like Captain Kidd's treasure, or Atlantis. Right, Quatermain? Something like that. Don't let him fool you. Quatermain believes in the mines. He even tried to find them once. Really? I was a kid. Ha! Ah, you were almost 30? It was years ago, and I never found one shred of evidence that proves that the mines exist. Hey. Well, a good story is still a good story. Why don't you tell us about it, Miss Maitland? Why not? It'll pass the time. Aye. Well, according to the biblical accounts, King Solomon ruled Judea for 40 years. He was supposedly a very wise king who united the lands around Jerusalem into a single country. And he built one temple to the one god of the Hebrews. 
It was to rival all the grand palaces of Mesopotamia and Egypt. So he sent his men to the far corners of the world, and they found a place where it was said the ancestors of the ancients buried a huge treasure trove of riches of every kind. Diamonds, gold, emeralds, rubies. This place was called Ophir. And on the return, these riches were used to adorn King Solomon's temple, and nothing in the world rivaled it. However, it is said that only a small amount of what the men found in Ophir was actually used in his temple, and the rest is yet to be found. Would you care to have some, boss? Well, it depends. What are you eating? Mm. An African delicacy. Mm. You know, more like your caviar. Caviar, eh? Yeah. Well, then I'll uh, give it a try. It's not bad. What do you call it? Mopanu worms. Worms? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> the savannah, Miss Maitland. Truly beautiful, is it not? Yes. So let me take a look. Oh, honestly, Mr. Quartermain. How does your wife tolerate your uncivilized behavior? Put this on, it just might help. His wife's dead, Miss Maitland. Happened a long time ago. And for your information, I think she liked his uncivilized behavior. Now. 
I don't understand you, Twilight. What do you want with the mines? You've known Eve for their riches. It is not riches that I crave. Ah. You crave power. The stone of the ancestors. But why? I mean, you're the, you're the king of this land, of all these people. It is not enough! It is not enough! Ah. Ah. Oh. My father was banished from this place and sent to the land of the white men. I was raised amongst you. I know who you are. And I know the best way to defeat you. Then so be it. Listen to me. The mother is either dead or right behind that bush waiting to come down on you like one of those antelope. Is this really necessary, Quartermain? Captain Good, this is not your London high society, where all you have at stake is your reputation. Out here, it is your life that's at stake. All clear, Quartermain. Thank you, Henry. It's late. We need to find a safe place to camp. All right. Let's let any camp up. I've never seen so many stars. It's really beautiful out here. The Savannah is seductive that way. Kiva. Mumza. We'll take turns at the fire tonight. I'll take the first watch. Okay, Mumza. Why do we need the fire in this heat, eh? Keeps the predators away, Captain. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, if you uh, need me, just call. Good night. I'm beginning to see why my father loves Africa so much. It's breathtaking. That it is. You mean to say we actually agree on something? I suppose so. Just look at this. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. It's getting late. We've got a lot of ground to cover tomorrow. Right. Good night, Mr. Quarterman. Good night, Miss Maitland.
Believe me, she's a lot more frightened of you than you were of her. I sincerely doubt it. Are you all right? All clear, Cotterby. Nicely done, Henry. If I have proper cut, you let me know. Good morning. Looks like a lovely day. Did you sleep well, Elizabeth, eh? Hmm? Henry, what's for breakfast? Get it close you. Further to Satandra's crowd. About uh, <laughs> three hours, if you're lucky. Your safety is my responsibility. There has to be another way. My father's letter was very specific. I have to make the exchange by myself. I'm afraid she's right, Captain. But for Elizabeth to go alone, we will be right behind her the whole way. Now, you see anything suspicious at all, you yell as loud as you can and you run for cover. You hear? Very, very careful. Now go. Hermosa. Be behind those rocks. Tangila, right flank behind those bushes. Not until I see my father. Give me map. Not until you show me my father. Put the map down, Miss Maitland. Back away. Our man, and he's dead. Elizabeth, run!
acting like Russians. And then you about the map. Russians? What the hell are Russians doing here? I'm fine. Elizabeth, uh, we must tell them. Tell them what? For the last few years, my father's pursuit of King Solomon's mines has been financed by the Tsar of Russia. I suppose they think the map belongs to him. I didn't think it would be an issue. My God. Peter is wounded. Where were you? You were supposed to cover us. I was not hard to kill for your precious Russia. You had the shot on Quartermain. I know you had the shot. I'm a tracker. I track, that's what I do. You want to kill Quartermain, you go ahead. But that's your department, not mine. You're a coward, McNabb. You sided with us. You made that choice. Live with it. Because after today, your friend, Quartermain, wouldn't hesitate to kill you. He's headed further inland. The tribes on the other side of those mountains are not always so friendly. We stay on his trail. We let him do the work. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, fine how? What are we going to do now? Henry. No, no. I, I know what you're thinking, Cotterman, but you can just forget about it right now. It's time to visit an old friend. No! Yes. Ah, oh, Mama Tusi! Jesus, Agoma! <laughs> Sir Henry, how long has it been? I don't think we should be talking to a witch doctor. We have no choice. Father is a teacher. A professor, actually. Sir Henry, I think you have something for me that might help. A necklace. He was a Kwakwanis, very loyal to their king, a man named Twala. Twala holds your father. You have a map. Let me see it. Hey! For money, for money. Follow the map. Get the key. What key? The key to King Solomon's mines. You'll find the key in the tomb of the righteous, in the sands of the great desert. Follow the path to Sheba's eye, through her breasts, and into the valley of the Guaguanis. The mine is there, and Twala will be waiting. My father? He too, by the grace of the ancestors. Go, travel quickly. There isn't much time. What just happened in there, and who is this Twala? I don't know. 
stakes just went way up. Wait here a minute. Who are you and what do you want? I am Bopa. You are headed north. I was born in the north. I haven't been home for a long time. I will go with you. I thank you. But we don't need another bearer. I require no pay and I can't be of great assistance. Just the same, I don't need any more men. I know this land very well and I've crossed the great desert before. Kiva is chief bearer. He'll tell you what to do. All right, everyone, listen up. We are now moving into uncharted territory where few have gone and even fewer have returned. So if there's anyone at all that wants to turn back, I suggest you do it now. There is no shame. Going with you. Of course not, Quartermain. We have no option. Why do you think African tribes would be interested in King Solomon's mines? They have no use for gold and jewels and stuff like that. It's a good question. I think it's a stone. What are you two talking about? What stone? Legend tells that King Solomon's mines contain an ancient relic. Stone of the ancestors. Do you think this is why they're holding my father? But they do say the one who holds the stone rules all of Africa. Let's move out. See them. Horses. We let them go now. They have some chance to get back to Satandra's alive. What do you mean? We're leaving the horses? We are being followed, Captain. So, Henry, you, V, Kiva, put together only what we absolutely need for the trip and get the rest together to move out. Now, Captain, if you could help, please. We're going out there on foot. Ms. Maitland, you should go back with the horses. Mama Tusi can arrange safe passage to Cape Town for you. What about my father? I will find your father. Look, I need to apologize. I should have told you about the Russians. The truth is, you haven't done half bad. I also think that your father would be very proud of you. I hope so. I need to see this through. I'm staying. Horses are ready, boss. And so am I. All right. Kiba, yeah. you stay with me. V, I need you to take three bearers. I need you to scramble the area. You take two horses east, two horses south, and we're gonna confuse the hell out of these guys. Then swing back around, and we'll meet up tonight at Kiskama River. All right. And be there. Who's on tour, Lanko? And I certainly hope you know what you've gotten yourself into. I do. 
away goes our transportation. Everybody take your shoes off. We need them following the horses, not us. Just here, a few hours ago at the most. Over here. Rex. They went this way. No, wait. More tracks here. Two sets of tracks. What? No. Which way, McNabb? Stop wasting time, McNabb. Which way? Could man have ditched the horses. Those tracks are a ruse. They went this way, on foot. How do you know? I see no boot prints. Bare feet made those tracks. Believe me, I know the way Quartermain thinks. Nonsense. I can carry my fair share. Are you sure this is my fair share? <laughs> it's truly amazing to be out walking in a place that hasn't changed for thousands of years. Most people only see bleakness in the desert. I can't believe it's taken me this long to get here. Why didn't you ever ask your father if you could join him? I did. All the time. Like you, he thought that his fragile daughter would be best left at home. It was far too dangerous for me to go. You don't see much, do you? It's been a long day. Why don't we make camp? We're trying to remain invisible, Captain. This is way too out in the open. We wait for V, get water, and we're gone. Someone is coming! Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, boss. So what happened? I led them several miles, but I don't think they followed. Seems our Russian friends have a tracker. Maybe we should keep moving. Well, what's the difference if we make camp? They know that we're here. At least we'll be rested. This is an excellent idea, Captain. Kiva, take the bears, erect the tents, gather wood, build a fire. Yeah, well. So you finally come to your senses. Something like that. They're still asleep. This is the chance. Don't take him for a fool. He knows we're following him. You already made sure of that. The map is the property of Mother Russia, and I take my orders directly from the Tsar. Not from you. I thought we agreed to let Quartermain take the risk of a spear in the gut from a native. We simply follow. No. We take the map now. I want as few people as possible getting to those mines. 
Your impatience, my friend, already got this man shot. And your procrastination is weakness. Guess what it is, Dad? Tosli. Never here. Yvonne. I pray facing towards home each morning. It gives me strength. So how long has it been since you've been there? I was forced to leave when I was just a small child. So you just decided to go back? The gods have foretold. They've given me you. Me? I don't understand. We'll be shown the way. You must have faith. I don't think the gods concern themselves too much with me. The gods know you very well, Quatermain. The gods smile upon you. And they know your destiny, even if you do not. talking about? Nothing. I'm just still trying to figure him out. Did you? <laughs> Actually, no. I think he's sad. The kind of sadness that keeps him from sharing his life with others. In many ways, he's just like you. Doesn't quite fit in, but he doesn't know what to do about it either. Is that right? Yes, it is. Yeah, boy. I'm going to go to the 
Ganjani. Ben, Ben, tengo como se dice esa foto. Que se guasa con el doctor Gazia que gas. Eh, Ben. Uy, bueno, Gasle, el doctor Gazia que. Oh, yeah, Bo. Que se guasa con el doctor Gazia. Y ni cago. La hamba con, no hamba nendo de mi chope. Ufanel me capele, Leon Dot. Ganjani. Lokangwazi. Kote ngi mbona ayo. Utu sa kufige njele nyako lo. Gizombu lala. Ebo. Utu sa itoni ndo ifuna ayo kosi ya. Temba kanjalo. Watch, boss. Thank you. There's your necklace. You want to trade for it? My dear Keeper, this watch was given to me by Her Majesty on my retirement. It's very special. Oh, that's a special too. Very well. It's a deal. This is beautiful. What does it stand for? I don't know. I bought it in a souvenir shop in Cape Town. Kiva. <laughs> How far do you think it is before we get to this tomb? It's hard to say. What do you think the cobra represents? The marker? Hopefully the entrance to the mines. I don't understand, a cobra. It's either an actual monument, a geological rock formation, or it could be a warning. A warning of what? I don't know, but we'll find out. These tracks are fresh. Then they're more than an hour ahead. Good. Much further, Cobra's head. But there's not much else. I haven't can what the hell we're looking for. We should have ridden those horses until they dropped dead. Vultures would have given us away. Bloody idiot. Nap. I think maybe you don't want us to catch up. I think maybe you are with Quarterman. Go ahead. Then when the wind comes up and blows these tracks away, the three of you can wander around in this desert together, lost. 
till the vultures come and pick out your eyeballs. Go on, they're hungry. Don't ever point a gun at me again. Ancestors, you know. To you, Sir Henry, who had the foresight to pack a necessity beyond all necessities, whiskey. Ah, the same right back at you, Admiral. Captain. Ah, congratulations, you've just been promoted. I'll drink to that. <laughs> I can't just stand around here doing nothing, looking at rocks. We have to do something. This book explains why King Solomon hid the key in a mine in the middle of a desert. It does? What does it say? Well, it turns out that King Solomon was building such an incredibly ornate temple because he had fallen in love with a certain queen. The Queen of Sheba. So when Sheba traveled to Jerusalem to meet Solomon, they fell in love completely, passionately. Yet Sheba's people did not approve. She was, after all, an African queen. And they were so different. They were from such different places, one steeped in the culture and tradition of Africa. And the other one not. So when she went back to Africa, Solomon would not give up. He was so in love that he sealed the mines and offered the key to Sheba in exchange for her becoming his wife, actually trying to bribe her. The man was so desperate that he sent righteous men to wait for her reply, and they waited for years. But Sheba could not bear to leave her people. So Solomon sealed the key in a tomb forever. What happened to Solomon and Sheba? Never saw each other again. It's sad. It is. I wonder what it's like to feel so passionate about someone. You're willing to sacrifice everything. the end. 
Morning, sisters. Hi. Elizabeth. It, it, it was the Russians. Russians? Yeah. And there was another man, one man. But out here, dressed like you, a hunter. McNabb. <laughs> 